Dearly beloved of God, we are praised. We pray the Lord for his time, his, his uh, keeping, his provisions. It sounds nice to say pray the Lord because he keeps us, he provides for us. It sounds nice to know that the favor of the Lord is upon us. It sounds great to know that God's care is at all times, in all places. Because these episodes in this program of Finding God, we just get to get entrenched, to get in there and know that actually God cares about us. And so that actually we find him. And like I've always said, it's all about life. It's all about joy. It's all about cheers. It's all about good health. Because God is life. God provides at all times. And so we get into scripture again. Thankfully, God cares. And so we say, Amen, that he's on our side. And so the personalities that we talk about in the Bible, I will never depart from it because they teach me a great deal. We have started on a moment thinking about some of those people that are little known. We have talked about them in the past. We shall continue talking about them. Now, this time, the person that we're going to talk about is a nameless person in the book of Exodus, chapter 2. And this nameless person is Pharaoh's daughter. I just read about him and I read about him. I get amazed the way God brings people in our life that can be our saviors. Now, this lady comes onto the scene and in the Finding God episode here, I read about her and we are going to share a few things about Pharaoh's daughter. What you can pick from her and what I can pick from her and what we can do during our generation. That actually history will tell something good about us. And here is the story in Exodus chapter 2 beginning. Let me just take 10 verses beginning at verse 1. Exodus. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took he as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. There was a situation that was prevailing at that time that actually there are babies, baby boys should be hidden. And when you read Exodus chapter 1, you'll find it clearly spelled out as Pharaoh, the king of Egypt rose against the people of Israel. And remember what happened when the other Israelite Hebrew midwives did. And so here, baby Moses comes. And so, in verse 3 of chapter 2, when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of brushes and dabbed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. That's a message in verse 4. His sister stood by near to see what would happen to him. In verse 5, now the daughter of Pharaoh, this is the point. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child and behold, this is what the Bible is saying, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Verse 8, the Bible says, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me. Nurse him 
for me. And I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and asked him, pray the Lord. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. God is providence. He became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Pray the Lord, brethren. That actually this portion of scripture is another one. Like those that have looked through, we read God's scriptures and they inform our actions. They inform our thinking. They inform everything about us. Now this young lady, Pharaoh's daughter, nameless, she comes into picture this time and she saves the situation. Pray the Lord. That the baby boy, one of the Hebrew boys, remember there was something that had happened in Egypt and Pharaoh had passed a decree that all baby boys should be killed. First he attempted with the midwives to kill them at birth. But the midwives, remember, the other two, Shifra and Pua, they saved, they said, no, Hebrew women are Hebrew vigorous, they give birth even before we reach there. And then because God was multiplying the Hebrews, Pharaoh and his team hatched another plan to destroy the baby boys and this time kill them. And this is what is connected with what happened in the New Testament when Jesus came, baby boys killed. And so we need, even as I enter into this portion of scripture, we need to also open our minds about what is killing the baby boys now, what is destroying the boy child. Yes, we thank God actually we are there, men and women, but baby boys also need to be taken care of. I think I think this is now the time also to awaken that actually baby boys can also be destroyed. And so this woman was moved by compassion. But before she's moved by compassion, you ask yourself at all times, why did she have to come to the river at this time? When it is time for baby Moses there. Why did she have to come? Now, and what moved the mother of Moses, of this baby? At first he's nameless until he's given a name in verse 10 by the Pharaoh's daughter. And I ask, what is it that actually this woman had in mind? Yes, the mother. And then she takes the... the, 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 the. God does things providentially for you. There are certain situations that happen and they end up working for the greater good. This woman makes a basket. This woman takes the baby to the river. This woman, you know, his sister, at this time she's called Miriam, keeps at a distance to watch and behold, something good is happening to the boy. Someone big, someone great in the nation comes the king's own daughter. Now, she looks at the basket, tells them fetch it, looks at the baby, and the baby crying, the baby crying, and she was filled with compassion, merciful, and she ended up, praise the Lord, ended up saving the baby's life. Least did she know that she was, something that she was doing was going to impact the nation of Israel. Like the other women, Shifra and Poor. Least did they know that what they were doing would culminate into something great in the nation. Least did this woman you know that actually she was doing something unknowingly for the people of Israel. So at least this girl, this young lady, Pharaoh's daughter did follow the wicked spirit that was existent in her father's life. She rescued Moses, pray the Lord, that she unknowingly became a responsible person in the life of the savior of the Hebrews. She is now a woman talked about. Very, very relevantly. Very, 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 very important. She also became a savior. 
She contributed to the salvation of the people of Israel. She did her work. And I praise God that actually when I read about it, I say, yes, there are people that can come into our life, least knowing that they are going to become great people, that they bring salvation in your life. This woman comes into the life of Moses, who is nameless at this time, because the name was given later by her. And it is something that actually, um, when I read, I get energized. That there are some little actions that we can do, and some little people that can be babies may look helpless. Anybody can do anything with them. But those that do good to save, they are doing God's work. This lady, Pharaoh's daughter, did God's work saving this baby. He rescued him. He raised him up. You see, unknowingly, God is providence, divine by divine provision. The sister standing by, and she runs to her house daughter and says, can I go and call a Hebrew woman to take care of this? And Praise the Lord that Pharaoh's daughter never objected. So there are certain things that can come. And when God is in it, it will work. Pray the Lord. That actually, Pharaoh's daughter could not object. Just said, please go, 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 go. And bring this woman. And he said, go, go, go and bring. You see verse 8, chapter 2 of Exodus? He says, go. So the child went. This girl went and called the child's mother. Now, these are some of the portions that actually inform our faith life. When the Bible says, fear not about tomorrow, for God knows. This woman feared, but God knew what would come out. She feared, but she did something. This is, I'm talking about mother's mother. So I pick this as a great lesson in me, in my life. So by God's own providence by God's own timing his real mother nurses him God provides for an opportunity now with nobody could with nobody who could come and touch mothers and pull him from the mother's breast because someone important in the nation for our daughter had given instructions take this baby take this boy Take this child and nurse him for me. And so may God do something in you, for you. And so that even when the situation is calm, you'll be safe at your mother's breast. Amen. Moses was at his mother's breast because Pharaoh's daughter was in charge. And so I pray that actually God hears our prayer that someone important you know god himself provides in his own way that nothing will happen to your life and that you'll grow to serve god you will grow to impact people moses did he impacted the people of israel and so friends we pick some lessons from this word, this woman, the situation in which Moses was, the basket, the river, the reeds, Miriam. Now, one other thing that actually we pick lesson from, Moses crying. Because listen to me, the Bible said actually when she opened, when I opened the basket, the baby was in there crying. And because of the crying, I assume that actually the crying drew more compassion from the woman. Yes, he looked at the baby lying there, but his crying also could have contributed to the, you know, to the quickening of the compassion in this lady's heart. He said, no, 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 no. This must be one of the Hebrew boys. And he just missed to say which whom my father is trying to kill. 
And now Moses is rescued that way. So God, remember, can he do anything? And at any time. And he can do everything at his own timing. To accomplish what he has purposed. Pray the Lord. God purposed to save Israel. And he did. He was moved to the heart. Read that chapter 2. Read chapter 3 of Exodus. And see that actually God's heart was in the salvation of his people. And when he purposes, God fulfills. Pray the Lord. He does. He fulfills. And it is my heart's desire that he will fulfill something for you. Even if it may take time, but it will come. That's for me, that's my confidence. And the reason why I keep my hopes high. Situation is going to come. I cry. I groan. But beneath, there is some little window. I say, yes, it is hurting me. It's happening now. But God, in his own timing, he will do anything. And he will do everything. He will do anything. But he will also do everything for me. So this moment is a serious moment at the right time by the right person by the right person at the right time does it say anything to you that this human comes at the right time and she's the right person in authority that actually Moses could not be grabbed from the mother's breast to be to be killed but he grew for the months that he was breastfeeding, safe and sound, pray the Lord, until he was of age and taken to Pharaoh's daughter's home. And there, the naming ceremony took place. He is now called Moses because I drew him from the water. And that's the meaning, by the way, Moshe in Hebrew. Now this is, it energizes my heart. It jubilates me when I remember things like that, the right time and the right person coming. And so God positions times. God positions people. Right time and right people. Right time and right person. Now, you who is thinking about something, also consider moments like this. When will the right person come? And Okay, when will the right time come? And when will the right person come? It is God's own timing. He never hurries. He never delays. But he's always on time. Can I repeat it? God never hurries. God never delays. And God um, never fails. Remember, even at Lazarus' death, Jesus took another three, four days. They said he's sick. He's bad love. He said, no, I will come. Pray the Lord that God comes. He never delays. He never hurries. And he never wastes time. He comes on the time. He's always on time. And this is the point that I wanted to drive very, very warmly into my life and into everyone. That actually you might have thought about it. You might have done it before. You might have said it before. You might have preached about it before. But we are saying God is timing is the best. And he brings, he comes at the right time and he brings in the right people. And they bring salvation into your life. Now, but this portion of scripture also shows us that actually when, he re, when people talk about evil, trouble, Suffering, it's not a joke, it's real. The Israelites were really suffering. The killings were real killings of the people, of the children, the baby boys. Even during Jesus' time, they hanged them, they killed them. And so when we talk about evil prevailing in the world, evil prevailing in our societies, it's real, it is real. And so it's not just imagined, but people kill others. People destroy others. People do harm to others. I saw you pray that actually in situations like this, people will change people's hearts. That people, will, God will raise people like Pharaoh's daughter to save the situation. Pharaoh's daughter saved the situation here. During the evil time, when Moses was about to be killed, she comes into a picture. And so we are unsafe, we are in trouble, but God knows. 
the right time and the right people that he can raise to save the situation. God will and God can. God can and God will. Pray the Lord and that he will save us. Now, one other thing that actually uh, that you need to think about is Moses was a little baby. He was a little boy. A few months. The rescue was small. The rescue was in line with the, the size of the boy. And so it was small, 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 small. Pray the Lord. Therefore, one of the verses in the Bible says, never despise a day of small beginnings. Now, small rescues, small savings, you s small salvations. Now, this is what happened. And actually, for our daughter, small away, a little boy, she came, saved Moses, a baby, but it culminated into something bigger and better, bigger and better, huge rescue. When God used this man, Moses, when he is now grown up, big man, go tell Pharaoh to release my people. And Israel was set free. Now, this small rescues points to the big one. Now, Pharaoh's daughter does something small. And so I want to ask you, that if there's something small that you can do for somebody, do it. If there's something little, I've said it before, I will keep saying it. If there's something good that you can do to somebody, do it. Because you never know what God is preparing. In our family, are they your relatives? Is it in the hospital? Is it by the roadside? If you're able to do something little, do it. That little rescue can become, people give testimonies that my uncle held my hand, my aunt held my hand, my brother held my hand, my cousin held my hand. Could you be one that holds on to someone, holds someone's hand, lifts someone's up, lifts someone, however little, however, and then you'll find someone. And if you are being helped, also be helpable, praise the Lord. If someone is helping you, be helpable. Moses was helpable. And he became somebody useful in the society. Now, I want to urge you that when someone is helping you, when there's someone who holds your hand, like Pharaoh's daughter held Moses' hand and saved him, also reciprocate to your society. Reciprocate. Get back and pay and help people out of the poverty, of the ignorance. Something that you can do to bring joy, smiling, cheers onto people's faces. Moses did it, and even when things were tough, but he led them one by one across the Red Sea into across the Jordan, even if he didn't reach there himself, but at least he moved them out of slavery. Now, friends, may God keep you. That actually this is very, very important. Now, one finally is that actually God clearly works to preserve our lives. God works to preserve your life. God works to preserve my life and your life. And so he uses various methods to preserve. I thought about this and I felt jubilating in my heart that God can use different methods to save different players to save our life. Many, many people, many, many situations can come into your life, but it's for your salvation. Listen to me. Mother's mother did something. It was for his salvation. Making a basket to hide the baby Moses was for his salvation. A basket itself was for Moses' salvation. In the first place, why did they have to take them to what they have to take him to the river bank for his salvation? Hiding him by the river, hiding him. Little situation, very, very informing that it is for his salvation. And how about the reeds. Why didn't they just put him just there in the open? But the reeds for hiding. So reeds also played their part. And I pray that actually God will use anything around you to save you. The reeds, the water, the basket. I felt good when I was writing about it. I said, yes, the reeds also played a part in the salvation of Moses. Yes, the water also does. And the basket also does. And Moses' mother did. Moses' sister did. Even the crying did. Because when 
the baby was in the basket and Pharaoh's daughter had opened that the baby cried. The baby was crying. The child was crying. She took pity on him. So if we are able, you know, in situations that can be, Pharaoh's daughter leaves us huge, immense lessons that we can pick from her. And every situation that was around Moses' life informs your faith, informs your obedience, informs your hope that never lose hope. Situations can turn around but never lose hope. And you may be Pharaoh's daughter in someone's life. So position yourself to stand out, to become the savior of somebody that will be of help to the nation. So may God bless you and watch over you. Pharaoh's daughter leaves a lesson to us and every situation around the Moses leaves lessons to us and that you and me will pick from there and so that we can live a life of hope and God providentially provides for us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be blessed.